Hi, my name is Christoph Ono. I am a designer, a design contributor for the Monero crypto project. I'm working on the desktop wallet and I wanted to just, just share something that I was working on because I think the design problem is pretty unique to the crypto world. So um, I'll start right here. This is my sketch file here. And uh, the settings screen of the Monero wallet is pretty long. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff mixed together. It was just, you know, somebody made a setting screen, put everything in. It was never properly broken down. And um, it's a little bit confusing too. There are lots of buttons that look pretty similar and, you know, some are really toggles and some of them uh, will pop up and window, others don't. So it's a mix of things. So I wanted to uh, break it down a little bit. So I um, created this uh, SAP navigation here with four different sections. Um, then for each of those sections, uh, they were previously just buttons. Uh, so I added kind of these titles and descriptions here. Then for the node, a few other options, and I'll get to that. Made sure this still kind of fits on in mobile. Here, you know, debugging info, logging info. So just a few things. Uh, but the, the main point that I wanted to, uh, to get started with here is, um, the, the way the Monero wallet works is that you can either download the whole blockchain for yourself, which is maybe 50 gigabytes or so. So, and that takes a really long time. Uh, even with a decent internet connection, you might uh, have to wait 10 hours until you're, you can actually use the wallet. And let's say you don't use it for a week and you get some money transferred and you want to check out your balance. You could do that through the Explorer, of course, too. Um, but if you wanted to use your wallet, then you know, you'd have to wait every single time. So the alternative is a remote node in which you connect to another so a server hosted by somebody else. And it, that server has the whole blockchain and you're really just kind of asking it questions. And so that, of course, goes, uh, it's a lot faster um, because you don't need this initial download. But it's also um, a bit more risky because you're re relying on somebody else uh, to not um, you know, manipulate or mess with the data. So um, generally the local node is preferred because you help them strengthen the network, but in practical terms, some users might just want a, a remote node. Um, and then let's say you want to add a remote node. This is actually the proper information here. You need to type in an address, a port, and optionally username and password. So the problem here is for most users, what is a port, what is an address? It's probably not a street address, right? Um, and how do you find that? You can't go to Google Maps. Um, you know, for non-technical people, this makes no sense. And uh, previously, there were just buttons there. And uh, I just added this little piece of text in here. Um, and so previously, none of these explanations were here. It was just these fields. Um, and of course, people just get stuck. And um, so we have this discussion about or the, the, the balance between usability and making things easy, ideally, a uh, perfect world uh, and remote node would automatically be picked randomly somehow um, so there would be no favoritism going on and the spirit of decentralization would would be strong but uh, in practical terms it's just not that so some people in the community and uh, this showed up here in this discussion so um, I posted this design as an issue on github um, and I just talked about settings but some people got into the discussion about, um, you know, why can't we just provide a list with trusted nodes? Trusted by whom is the question? So it's kind of a little bit of back and forth, wasn't really resolved. Um, so I try to find a middle ground here, basically, and uh, created a new issue. So while previously we might just have a bunch of input fields without explanation, um, my solution, which I then posted in a new issue here, better explain how to find a the remote node, try to get the conversation to happen here, um, to find a remote node. So if we, if we do not want to include nodes, but we want to make it easier for people, let's just explain it better. Um, and just a few, from my experience, just a few lines of text sometimes can be big helpers. So, you know, just type in Monero remote node into your search engine and the actual top search result is pretty much what you need. Um, make sure it's trusted by a third party. And then there's also a tutorial on um, getmonero.org. And uh, that is also a community site. It's the main site for the project. So this uh, page here can then be iterated on um, 
and improved with all the different ways that you can find nodes without actually telling you what the node should be. Um, so ideally, this uh, very small tweak here helps uh, uh, make things a little bit more obvious and easy for users without, uh, without the, the decentralization side having to suffer. So um, I think that's a pretty unique issue to, um, to crypto wallets to, to solve, kind of a UX problem there. It's still not perfect, but um, you know, hopefully it's kind of a step in the, in the right direction. Ideally, there could be some type of uh, community sourced, automated, trustworthy way to, to automatically get a remote node randomly assigned possibly and still ensure that they're trustworthy. But uh, I don't think we're there right now, so we'll have to find some type of middle ground. So if people that want a little bit more comfort of a, or um, convenience of a remote node, they'll just have to do a little bit extra work. Um, so that's just kind of my first stab at this. Uh, just wanted to share that and I'm curious what, uh, what you think. Thanks.